All right, load me, load me up, Sergeant. Load me up. You're loaded, you're locked. I'm locked and loaded. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ty and Gig Builds. It's just Ty here today, but we have Gig in spirit, and I'm gonna be explaining how to control a strip of LEDs through a Raspberry Pi. This video is specifically designed to be about the last build that we had. It was designing a message board to display characters on a screen. And so I'm gonna walk you through what exactly I did to show those characters on the screen. It's gonna have a lot of programming, it's gonna have a lot of circuitry, soldering, all of that, and we're gonna get into that. All the equipment, the parts, everything I use, I'll link those in the description. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Maybe you learned something, maybe I will too. I hope I do. I'm gonna go over the high level design of the process. The first thing I'll talk about is the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero and I'm using a Zero because I have it. We're gonna use the Raspberry Pi to send a data signal through one of the GPIO pins to the LED strip. And the LEDs we're using are WS2812B LEDs. That long string of words just means that you can individually assign colors and graph and brightness and all that stuff to each single LED. The Raspberry Pi GPIO pins only produce a 3.3 voltage and the LED strips unfortunately need a 5.0 voltage. So I'll have to create a circuit to step up the voltage from 3.3 to 5.0 in order for the data signal to transfer properly the LED strips. You'll need a power supply for these LED strips. This is just a five volt power supply. You get this at Amazon, it's very simple. Oh, yeah. You're live. I am, I'm live. All right guys, so I'm gonna actually prototype this circuit because I didn't test the LED strips that I got work right now. So we're gonna prototype it on a prototyping board. And once we confirm these LED strips work, we're gonna put it on the real thing. What you do there? It looks like it looks like the prototype work is what it looks like to me. So I think we can move forward with actually creating this thing. It's that easy. You literally plug it in. So after the prototype was shown to work, I started wiring up the real circuit, and this circuit is a simple step up circuit. So I use an integrated circuit to make sure that the 3.3 volts coming from the Raspberry Pi is actually 5 volts when it's sent in the data signal to the LED strip. And I actually got this design from an Adafruit article, so I'll link that down in the description. It'll have more details on the actual wiring of the circuit. We good? Are you sure? You don't look very confident. All right guys, we're gonna attach the LED strips to the board. I have made some measurements and I got a straight edge to make sure that when I adhere it to the actual board, it'll be straight. I'm gonna center these really good and there's adhesive already on the back of these so I just need to peel it off and add it to it. When I add these LED strips to the board, I'm just gonna make sure the direction I'm doing it. They have to be oriented in a way that they're snaking so I gotta make sure that I'm doing that correctly. Off camera, I cut these LED strips into five even lengths. My LED strips were 300, so I cut them in lengths of 60. And as I stated earlier, I paid close attention to the direction of the LED strips. The data signal needs to go in a certain direction, and you can follow that looking closely at the LED strip. And since they're cut, I need to now solder the connections between the LED strips so it's a continuous loop. And to protect those joints from bumps and bruises, I added a lot of hot glue to make sure they weren't moving around. While I was at it, I added these quick connectors so the LED message board can go in and out of the circuit very easily. And then I finished up the circuit by soldering in the data wire to the Raspberry Pi. This is soldered to a very special GPIO pin that allows for PWN, that's pulse width modulation, and that's the framework that's needed to communicate with WS2812B LEDs. The actual location of this pin will change depending on the model of Pi you're using. I think in my case it was the GPIO 1. So I set up the Raspberry Pi off screen. I set up the Wi-Fi, enabled SSH, and I put a static IP so I know how to SSH into it. I'm into the Pi, and the next step is going to be cloning the repository that has the code that I wrote. And so I'm just going to do a git clone and the repository name. I'll include this repository link in the description. Now that it's cloned, the next step is to make sure that you have Python 3 and pip3 installed. So we'll do a which Python 3. Looks like I got it already based on the default OS. So we'll do which pip3. Okay, now that we have both Python 3 and pip3 installed, we just need to install the requirements in the requirements file on this repository. So if I list them out, sorry, you can see that I have the message board repository here. And if I go to change directory message board and I list it out, you'll see the requirements file. So if I just install the requirements, uh, sudo pip3 
install the shar requirements. This is going to install all the dependencies that we need to run this. Okay, after some time, our install is finished. And we're ready to move on to the next step. So we installed the requirements that we need for this package, and we're trying to now just give this a shot. So if I keep doing that, but if I do ls-l, you can see we have our script, animate message word.py, and I think we'll be able to run it now. So if we do sudo python3 animate.py, and we'll send it hello world. World, or just hello, I guess, in this case. You'll see that we'll actually get an error by running this command. And the reason we're getting an error is because we didn't actually install another requirement. What we did install was Bibliopixel. Bibliopixel is basically a library that wraps all different kinds of drivers for LED strips. We didn't install the driver for the LED strip that we have. So we use the WS2812B LED strips and we didn't install the driver so Bibliopixel can't actually control the board. Bibliopixel wraps this in a nice way and you're able to actually create matrices, display images to the board and all those things. And the script that I wrote basically uses that library for this specific use case for the Raspberry Pi with the WS2812B LEDs. Um, so we're going to have to install the driver for the WS2812B LED and the instructions of which are right here. So I'm just going to copy these exactly and install the driver. Okay, so the install went successfully to install the driver. I just copied those commands that were there and it worked fine for me. I ended up moving the directory structure a little bit just so it's a little bit cleaner. So I created this scripts folder and in the scripts folder, I moved those directories in here. And so the first thing you want to do when you configure your Pi is you want to test that the driver actually works and the, and the circuit you built for the LED strips actually works. And to do that, there's actually a test function. So if you go to ARP, Go to the rpi ws281x directory and you list it out you'll see that there's actually a test executable here and so we want to test that the matrix works and in order to do that we just need to go sudo test we're going to give it the width of the led board in this case will be 58 and we're also going to do the height of the led board so i'm going to do five and if all goes well you should see a blue bar going across the screen with some green dots and if you didn't do it right you'll see there's be some missing LEDs or the pattern is not lined up correctly so once you get the test to pass successfully and you get the image that should appear we're gonna go ahead and go back to the message board directory and we're gonna look through the code a little bit so the way this is designed is we have one file animate message board.py which is actually the scripts we're gonna be using to display a message to our message board the code behind this is in the message board directory. So here's the code for actually displaying the image to the screen. And I'm going to walk through exactly what's happening here. So we have this first part which just says we need one argument in the command line only. And this is going to be the message display. It's pretty straightforward. So when we issue the command, it'll be sudo python3 animate message board.py and then a string that'll be the message we want. Here is actually a list of attributes that we're sending the bibliotech library to display a message to the screen. And these will actually change depending on your implementation. So the vertical flip and Y flip are just if you want it to flip across the X or the Y axis. Depending on this, you might have some words upside down if it's incorrect. You may have words coming left to right. Um, it, it, <laughs> it might be a little screwed up depending on how you actually set this thing up. Serpentine just says that we're in a snake format, and the way I did it, it wasn't a snake. Um, so this is going to actually have to be true. Um, thread, you just want this to be false. Don't even bother with that. Width is the number of LEDs across, and height is the number above. If you incorrectly set these, you're going to get some weird gibberish that's coming on the screen. It's not actually going to be words. It's going to be like hieroglyphic kind of weird things. Uh, so just make sure that the height and width are set correctly. Um, and you have brightness too. So you can adjust the brightness as you please up to 255. Okay, that's pretty much it for the code. So let's try to go back to the command line and we'll try issuing the command to make sure we get the messages on the screen. So if we do sudo python3 animate.py and then we do actually hello world. If I move this freaking microphone, worlds. So you'll notice when it first start running, it has these warnings. You can ignore those. 
and it is actually putting the words in the screen. That's great. So we can control the message board remotely. We can SSH into this thing. We can put a while loop in here to modify it. We can do a lot of different things. In the future, we're actually going to have videos on how to put tweets from your favorite uh, t Twitter account on here, how to control this from a website, uh, many different things. Um, so this is just the base implementation, and the code is actually pretty crude, but it's a very good start. All right, folks, we're all done here. A little tech heavy this week, but you can see the box in its final form. If you're interested in seeing how we actually made this box and put everything in there, you can watch last week's episode. We will be doing a woodworking one next week if you're interested, so stay tuned. Please like, comment, subscribe, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Zanga, MySpace, all of those things if you like this. And that's it for, for this one, so we'll see you next week. I can comment on anything. What is that? I don't know what it is. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is this I'm very knowledgeable if you couldn't tell.